I'd put for it specified. Eight, but I don't think there's anybody up there on Saturday. They've got to be there. So I found out there was enough time between planes. Come here for a quick hello and goodbye. And some coffee. Well, don't let me catch you putting today's breakfast on your expense account. Hmm. Well, in that case, dear Mark, dear Grouch, I'll have a donut, too. Say, Kluge, has it ever occurred to you that we're in the wrong end of this newspaper racket? Here we sit waiting to do a tired feature on a phony Jesse James while our Washington correspondent here is on her way to the foreign minister's conference in Gay Paris. Let's face it, kid, what foreign minister would want to pinch our cheeks? Good morning, Mr. Preller. Good morning, Mr. Granger. Good morning, Mr. Preller. Uh, Mr. Preller, as long as it is this early and there's nothing much doing here, would you like to discuss what you did yesterday with me? You bet, Mr. Granger. It was that? He started on rewrite yesterday. You wore off. You didn't meet him. Oh, well, I'm probably in the way. I liked what you did yesterday, but I made a few changes. He usually does. Please. Mr. Preller, meet Nick Alexander. Hello. And this is... Can you help me? What is that? Some woman out there. I'll go see. Thanks. Uh, this is Lizzie Hogan, and that's my colleague. How do you do? How do you do? Open the window, please. Uh, Mrs. is closed. There's nobody there. I, I see somebody. Well, just a cleaning woman. The people in classified don't work on Saturdays. Got to be somebody there. I must place a classified ad, a personal ad, in the Sunday bulletin for tomorrow. Well, you can't. They uh, start printing the Sunday classified early. They stopped taking ads for it yesterday, Friday, 1 o'clock. I'm... I must insert an ad. A 16-word notice in personals. Now, there must be someone I can talk to, someone in charge. I it's an emergency, please. What kind of an emergency? Please don't waste time. I can take it to see Mr. Granger, a city Granger. editor, but I doubt if he can help you. The classified really isn't Granger, anything in his department. In Somebody's got to help. Mr. Granger? Yes? You've got to help me. I must put a classified ad in tomorrow's paper. Well, you can't unless classified is closed. I must. Mr. Granger, my husband has been kidnapped. Here, I got this this morning. We have your husband. If you tell the police or anybody else, we'll kill him. We want $25,000. Have it ready. If you will play ball, run this ad in the Sunday Bulletin Classified section tomorrow, and we will get in touch with you. Dear George, the Siamese cat is missing. I will do anything to get him back. Mary. Tomorrow's paper. This ad. Sixteen stupid words about a cat. Don't you understand? They're going to kill my husband. <laughs> I got a photographer on that West Side Highway accident. Are we going to send a reporter or just use this AP stuff? Well, let's wait a while, huh? Mark can't stay in there too much longer, no matter what it is. Mr. Alexander, you know, uh, everybody's trying to figure out what's going on in there. Oh, but... Uh, so, come on, uh, don't I go out and get you the special sandwiches, poly saucy, the uh, kibasi, like your mother used to make, you know? <laughs> take it easy when you relax. Hey, uh, did you take it easy when you liked me? Uh, when you were a coffee boy? No. All right, now let's just be sure that we have this right. Mrs. Robert Fielder, 917 Marion Road, Portchester, New York. And your telephone number? Westmore 99970. After you notified our bureau, you brought everybody right in here as we requested. Yes, that's right. I was the only one who left briefly. That was an unsuccessful attempt to phone my publisher. From the payphone, I didn't want anybody in the city room to uh, listen in on an open line. That's correct. Nobody else can be let in on this. On this newspaper or anywhere else. 
And that goes to your publisher, too. Oh, yes, I know that. But you see, if I can get a hold of him, he's up in the Adirondacks hunting, I can at least get authorization to replate one page of the classified section. I can replate a news page on my own, but something like this is up to him. But you can't tell him. No, I know that, Mrs. Fielder. But he'll trust me. Teletype Washington, then get the police to set up the surveillance in Mrs. Fielder's home. Call the composing room and find out what's the latest time we can break open one of those classified pages. Might not be time. Was that you were telling me outside? It's being printed already. You told me the Sunday classified section's being printed. It's all right, Mrs. Fielder. That's, that's only the early run. The papers that go to Jersey and upstate. Now, whoever has your husband is probably right here in the city. We don't start putting it into the city run for a little while. You're 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Oh, please do something. Here's the number. Try long distance on the payphone. See if they're still trying to get a hold of Saunders. Mm. And when did you see your husband last? Yesterday morning. He took his regular train in from Porchester. He didn't come home last night. But I thought he was staying in town with his folks. He does that a lot when he has to work late. Does your husband have any enemies, anybody who might want to hurt him? Would want to hurt Bob. People make enemies, you never know. I'd know. Mrs. Fielder, this is important. I have a hunch that this isn't the work of a real criminal. The ransom demand is a small one as these things go. Frankly, I think an experienced criminal would go after a larger game than your husband. When it's like this, the kidnapper often narrows in on somebody he knows. Somebody he has a grudge against. So, I shall want to know more about your husband's business. Fielder Electronics. How many employees does he have? Maybe a hundred, I guess. Do you know if he's fired anybody recently? I don't know. Why would he tell me? I don't care about authorizations. My husband is going to die! Well, we won't hear from Saunders. I know him when he goes hunting. He was in that duck blind at 4 o'clock this morning. He won't be back all day. How do you explain the internal problems? The ways of a newspaper to somebody like that? What am I supposed to tell her? That Saunders is okay? That Saunders backs us? But some of the men around him think that I spend too much turning out the best paper I can. They're always screaming and sniping, waiting for me to overreach myself. Get me the composing room. Composing room, Bennett. This is Granger. I know this is irregular, but I'm bringing you back a personal to be inserted in the Sunday classified for the city run. And what's gotten into Saunders all of a sudden? Authorizing a classified replay on Saturday? I am authorizing this, Bennett. You are? Yes, I am. He did it, Mrs. Fielder. He authorized your ad. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We'll have to send you home now, Mrs. Fielder, in case the kidnapper reads the ad and sends another message. But he might be watching the house to see if she's contacted us or the police. So we'll need somebody inside the house with her who won't arouse suspicion. Miss Hogan? I'd like that. Oh, now, wait a minute. Miss Hogan is uh, supposed to be covering the foreign minister's conference in Paris. She should be at Idlewild while right now. Oh, Mark, I can miss the first day. Let's face it, I could write the opening day communiques right here. Lizzie, did I ever tell you you were a good girl? Well, I'll uh, leave the building first in case anybody is watching. And the rest of you get outside, please. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Mr. Denslow, there, there could be someone with a grudge against my husband. He's been working so hard lately. Whatever money we have and whatever his mother and father have, it's in the plant. It's been such a strain. He has fired some people. Sometimes he, he just blows up. He, he doesn't mean it. He's really very sweet, but he just gets so mad. <coughs> Come in. Excuse me for mentioning such a minor detail, Mark, but we've got a paper to get out. As for you, Nick, you've got that Jesse James character waiting. Are we throwing here, Mr. Denslow? Right. So? So? What, do you have nothing to tell me? Good morning, David. That's what I have to tell you. Good morning, Dave. Fifteen years we've been working together here side by side. All you got to say is good morning. And what do you want me to do, kiss you? A oh boy. Yes, sir. 
Will you take these bags and go downstairs with Miss Hogan and this lady here and get them a taxi? Okay, Mr. Granger. Would you at least care to discuss the fact that we got Belnick on two from Brooklyn with a suicide pact, some older man and his, his secretary? Give that to Mr. Preller. He hasn't had a chance to write very much this morning. Yeah, I noticed that. Preller, will you pick up two, please? You bet. I'm Alexander. I'm Frank Lee of Rodeo Publicity. No kidding. And this is Jesse James. You going to take the pictures now or later? Maybe I'll just use the last pictures I took of the last Jesse James. Come on, Jesse. City room. You said both the bodies were lying across the bed. Mr. Newton on too. Thank you, Polly. This is Dwight Newton. San Francisco. There goes the end. Kooky world, isn't it, kid? We have to sit on a story like that. With Jesse James, we can scream to the world. Sit down. Thank you, thank you. People thought I got shot. But a woman, an Indian woman, well, she uh, hid me out in her cabin, and I raved delirious for a month. What was her name, Pocahontas? Jesse, what do you do at the rodeo? I ride a horse. Oh, what do you think he does, sell popcorn? My brother Frank, he had a bad temper. But I learned good things from that there Indian woman, and I repented. Hold it, Jesse. The need is done. It took some doing, but it's done. Mr. Bennett said it was my neck. They're sending it by hand. I'll have a proof in a minute. Oh, did you get the cab okay? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Alexander, uh, when you were in that meeting, I was talking to Jesse James' character, and I, <laughs> I took a few notes. Well, good, good. Uh, there's an idea there. I mean, just an idea for the lead. It's not bad, is it? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I was just practicing. My protege. I know. I wish you'd encourage your protege to spend more time at his switchboard and let the rest of us put out the paper. Here, Granger, I want you to initial this proof. Yes, I imagine you do. I hit him too hard. Maybe he'll die. He won't die, Mr. High and Mighty. Yeah. What do you expect? Treat me like dirt. <clears throat> He's all right. Yeah. I, I just told you. <clears throat> so far, so good. The bulletin, when's it come out? Sunday bulletin. It comes out early Saturday night. Mr. High and Mighty. It's supposed to be a light story. It's a gag. You couldn't get one of them when he was smiling? I did my best, but every time I asked him to say cheese, he remembered he was hungry. Let's face it, you can't mess around with those old bad men. I'll get it. It's my private portrait business. They think the phone booth is my office. I, uh, I see the big secret's still on, huh? Vinny, if I were you, I'd just concentrate on writing leads. You're doing okay there. Hey, you used it? Yeah. Hey, what's great? Hey, hey, Charlie, you hear that? Nick Alexander, you smile, eating his smile. So what? Oh, you creep. What are you doing in a newspaper business? I applied for a job. It said Aaron Boy. It didn't say writer. Do you mind? Uh, Saunders? You know who is. How's Mrs. Fielder? She's doing as well as can be expected. She's a little nervous about that 25000 her father-in-law is supposed to raise. It's not easy on Saturday with the banks closed. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the FBI people. The FBI people are sending the in-laws out to Portchester now. Uh -huh. 